In today's video, we're going to check out some creepy TikTok conspiracies. Let's get into it. The following video was posted by a woman on YouTube. She was listening to her daughter play and speak to someone in the kitchen, but there's nobody else in the house. So she goes over to her and is recording and asking her several times, who are you speaking to? The terrifying part about all of this is something answers back and it clearly names itself. Take a look, listen to this video, and tell me what you hear. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Who are you talking to? This one, I'm not sure if the ghost said its name was Ryan. I'm pretty sure the kid just said something and it sounded like Ryan. But nonetheless, I'm sure the kids do see something and this child was acting as if they seen something in that corner. Scientists have discovered that a volcano in Antarctica is spewing out roughly $6,000 worth of gold every single day. Antarctica lacking a whole lot of democracy right now. The continent is home to hundreds of active volcanoes, but Mount Erebus, which is located here, for anyone looking, has been discovered to have tiny crystals of metallic gold loaded in its gusts of gas. Scientists estimate that the volcano spews out around 80 grams of gold a day, which is worth around $6,000. That's a yearly salary of $2.19 million. That's insane. This is the first time I've ever heard of anything like this and more reasons why we probably would want to go to Antarctica and probably the reason why it's like blocked off. People are trying to collect this kind of stuff, I bet. And it also makes me wonder, if this volcano is spewing out gold, which is a good conductor of electricity, maybe beneath the ice there is advanced technology that people were using back in the day to manipulate this gold for their technology. It's a pretty interesting theory. The following video comes from a witness who lives in New Zealand. They notice something weird happening in the skies above them. Keep in mind, there was no parade, there were no spotlights out, nothing like that that could explain why these odd lights were in the sky. Could this be a UFO, or is this something else? Take a look at this footage and you tell me. In 1890, the first reporting of the Cherokee Death Cat, or the Wampus Cat, was reported in Iredell County, North Carolina. Now, this creature is said to be at least six foot tall, weighing over 500 pounds. It has red glowing eyes, huge fangs with elongated claws that are known to tear apart its victims. The screams of this creature can be heard throughout the hills and mountains of Appalachia in East Tennessee and in North Carolina. One Cherokee legend states that the creature is the embodiment of a female onlooker who hid underneath a wildcat's pelt during a sacred Native American ceremony and was cursed to roam the hills of Appalachia. Many claim that this creature is evil and is forced to roam the mountains forever. Others claim that the creature is a protector of the mountains of Appalachia and the sacred lands of the Native American people. And see these openings on this map where they tell us that all Antarctica bound expeditions must be authorized by the operator's own country or the vessel's flag state where heavy fines can result 
from non-authorized visits to Antarctica. Would you like to see the openings in our map? A massive operation shut this down in the mid-1900s. And now, we have further evidence of this. Again, I do believe that all of this information is here for us to find it. I think this is all available to us, as long as this is something that we want to know. It's all very clear. The more truth that you know, it all makes more and more sense. And it all lines up, exactly how the truth always does. While a lie is all over the place. I've said this before, but I do think it's possible. That they are waiting to see who can find this information. They've left it out there. Now the word medieval, in my eyes, is another word for the old world. They explain the narrative away by simply calling it medieval. So let's remember this going forward. Right on their website, the Hereford Cathedral tells us that the medieval cathedral was not monastic. They even tell us that the map that they hold inside this place, the map that we discuss today, is one of the world's unique medieval treasures. Our timeline starts around 1700 and then spikes in the 1800 with massive operations going on in the 1800s. All in my opinion, of course, based on everything that we have seen. But this is why I always check the 1800s for major destruction projects of these incredible palaces. Oh, wait, did I say destruction? I meant restoration. When you go to the mid 1800s yet again, we have the exact same narrative here. 1841 to 1863, major restoration of the cathedral. A cathedral that did not need our help. In fact, we weren't even given the power tool until 1895. So what major renovations could our horse and wagon friends have truly done to this palace? Do you think it's possible that they removed things that did not fit into our mainstream timeline? Before we go into the bonus, I'm going to show you this, how I don't believe that the map of Mundi has always been here at this location. I believe that it was put here when we are told the only complete world map of its kind to have survived a fascinating pictorial encyclopedia of the medieval world where it may have been, it might have been, maybe, but the mainstream narrative is of course iffy on that. It might have been made for the Hereford Cathedral and has been here for most of its life. Most of its life. Not all of its life? Where was it before? Who really made this map? Why was the other one bombed? This is extremely interesting stuff, especially when this is all on their website. And in my opinion, an admission that this was not theirs. This was not there in that palace for its whole life. They even call it medieval, and they have now taken possession of it. Oh. In 1786, the west tower of the cathedral just collapses overnight. On Easter Monday. Just random, of course. Do we think that that was random? You tell me. Clearly a palace from the old world. And just for fun, let's show the repeating names. Robert of Lorraine. Robert de Baton. Four more Roberts buried here. And then we have two Thomases with three more Thomases buried there. And we can't leave out a couple Hughes thrown in back to back. Now for the bonus. Located at 651 Main Street, Buffalo, New York. Opening in 1877. We have the Dr. Ray V. Pierce Palace Hotel. Where this gets wild. We've talked about energy here on this channel. How these buildings hold energy. But this gets deep. The place was half hotel, half hospital, where the baths and gymnasiums on the campus were known nationwide for their healing and restorative powers. A healing hotel. Where is this why a lot of the old world buildings have been destroyed? Because they held healing powers for all of us. Where two presidents were frequent visitors. Pierce's Palace Hotel was open only four years before it burned down in 1881. And are we right or what? Is this not a nod? I'm not joking. Every time I see this narrative, I am more and more surprised. For one, that we never noticed this before. And for two, that they really put this in the narrative over and over and over, all over the world. And we know here that that building was much older than just four years. And you can see what I'm talking about with all of these fires, when we just flip over to the St. Peter's Cathedral Basilica in London, Ontario, and see that they just throw this into the narrative as a nod to their group for future generations, in my opinion. 
to recognize which buildings are from the previous civilization, where it says that there were multiple churches on this location. The first one was destroyed in the London Fire, 1845, and a larger frame church was built. But this church also burned down in 1850, five years later. And we have a whole series about this nod called The Fire Games. It's all in a playlist, which includes episode 68 and episode 69. So now let's get back to this Pierce's Hotel. After that fire that we just showed, in 1881, Pierce opened his Invalids Hotel and Surgical Institute on the 600 block of Main Street, which survived until 1941, where things begin to get interesting. The beginning of the end for the Pierce's Invalids Hotel and Surgical Institute likely came to an end in 1939, when the Federal Trade Commission included this cease and desist order in a stipulation, they were basically no longer allowed to call themselves doctors or medical men. They were no longer able to give medical advice, not being able to call themselves doctors or call their advice medical advice. Must have been a lethal blow a little over a year later, where in my opinion, this was the end of this old world medicine, old world healing powers coming to an end. When on August 1st, 1941, the Invalids Hotel and Surgical Institute discontinued operations. And Pierce, the one that had this knowledge of old world healings, passes away. And two years after that, 1944, Kane announced that they would be destroying all of the Pierce's estate's glass work. Wow, that was really interesting. And I agree with what this person was saying at the beginning of the video. I really think that there is hidden knowledge out there that the elites are just waiting for us to find out so that they can select us for whatever opportunities that they might have for us. And it's up to us whether or not we fall in that line. Or maybe if you say anything, they threaten your family and your life or something like that. But I do believe that there is secret information out there that they keep out there for special individuals to find and learn about. And then once the elites are like, oh, yeah, well, this person's got a special mind. They're capable of learning about this stuff. They they contact those people. It just makes you wonder, is the education that we are taught real education? Or is there parts of it taken out to keep us submissive? That has always been something that's ran through my mind. Let me know your thoughts on this. Hey, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I only ask once per video and I make a video like this almost every day. And to the people that are subscribed to the channel, thank you so much for being subscribed. And to the people that are not subscribed to the channel, I still appreciate you nonetheless. Thank you for watching. And don't forget, if you want to be a part of Questions for DK, where I answer personal questions, questions about conspiracy theories or theories in general, leave a comment starting with Questions for DK so that I can find them in the YouTube search results and answer those questions in a future video. I know of multiple devices that would literally save humanity and the planet. What they don't know is that there is a, a longitudinal wave that is faster than the speed of light that disrupts the fabric and communication and, and propulsion guidance systems of extraterrestrial vehicles. This is why they came in in huge force in the 40s and 50s. We know what they are, where they come from, which ones are man-made and which ones are extraterrestrial. Secrecy surrounding UFOs is a threat to the national security. This creates an existential threat for the whole planet that we have people who don't understand it, who should, and the people who do understand it are weaponizing those systems. I mean, there are huge implications for this mistake that was made almost a century ago. In this deep, dark secrecy, there are existential threat to life on Earth. That's what's happening. There's rich history of giants regarding the Solomon Islands. Wow. World War II. The Japanese have invaded Solomon Islands because they're going to be a pivotal region of islands to cut off trades with like Australia and stuff. So they're just trying to take over the whole Pacific at this point, right? The story regards the uh, Guadalcanal. And then the U.S. came and they came to Guadalcanal and there was no Japanese to be seen. Uh -oh. So they're coming in thinking that it was going to be like a ambush D-Day kind of thing where they're going to have to fight and stuff to get claim over Guadalcanal. No resistance. They just pulled up to the beach like, 
like, where are all the Japanese? It turns out all the Japanese soldiers were in the woods. What the locals had said was that these Japanese were picked off by giants. So the Japanese go in there and they were attacking U.S. soldiers. But a lot of Japanese soldiers surrendered, which is not what they would do at that time because what the Japanese said that survival after defeat was a disgrace. These Japanese soldiers encountered these giants at their camps and stuff at night. These giant men, which were reported to be 8 to 15 feet tall, red hair, would come and eat the Japanese soldiers, rip them apart and just eat them. Like no cooking. Sushi. (laughs) That's pretty interesting. I wonder where they're getting the story from for this information, because I would like to know if there's some kind of history log about the soldiers talking about the giants, or if maybe there's Japanese soldiers that are talking about the giants, because that's pretty intense to have eight to 15 foot tall people coming up into your village, tearing you apart and just eating you. There would be records of that everywhere, you would think, especially in that time frame. Check out this moon footage with my P-1000. What's that right there? Y'all keep watching. Keep on watching. Here we go. Yeah, the wind was blowing pretty bad. Yeah, I know. It's a little shaky. Just just give it a second. It'll be fine. Oh, I know y'all are in the comments. Clean your lens off. Do, do, do. <laughs> I clean the lens, I clean the filter on both sides every time before I use it. So look, what y'all are seeing are those are the sunspots on the sun. Y'all keep saying to clean the lens, man. It's the, it's the sunspots, and they change every day. Anyways, look at that crater right there. Or is it something else? Nobody knows. Almost like the moon's moving, moving and not us. Kind of strange, and then look at the. Y'all need to get y'all a Nikon P1000, man. If y'all haven't get one, this is by far it's the best investment I, I ever could have gotten, dude. Seriously, I, I, I'm telling you. Look at that. I'm not gonna lie. That little weird formation on the bottom right of the moon definitely looks like some sort of structure. I don't know if it's volcanic. I don't know if it's man-made, but it definitely looks like a protruding structure, almost pyramid-like. But other than that, I don't know if it's worth getting the the, the P-1000. But it's still a nice shot nonetheless. Let me know what you guys think. Do you see anything weird in this shot? Because I'm telling you, there looks to be like a structure on the right side of the moon. That's pretty cool. Levitation was probably the a scientific reality to ancient cultures. Yeah. Interestingly, you know, the stories about the um, the Ark of the Covenant, you know, it was sheathed in gold and it would have been extremely heavy. Would have been very difficult to for people to lift and and move. And I forget I've seen some calculations of how heavy the damn thing would have been. And uh, you know, it was carried on staves because no one according to the accounts, no one could touch it. Mm-hmm. Lest they would get fried somehow, but I always I noticed interestingly that you know the tribe that was the only tribe that was allowed of the twelve tribes to actually transport and move the the Ark of the Covenant. Do you know which tribe that was? I do not. The Levites. The Levites. Mm-hmm. Levites. Levity. Levitation. Got it. Mm-hmm. Got it. And, you know, having looked into some of these mystery religions like Kabbalah and stuff that say that there's hidden meanings to the words and the language, um, homonyms and synonyms and things that, you know, that's the whole basis of the Kabbalistic system. That caught my eye and I thought, that's interesting coincidence. I need to apologize. I got something wrong. Not that aliens live in Alaska, because aliens definitely live in Alaska, and I'll give you more reasons why in just a second. But in my last video, I said the remote viewing session that took place that said aliens live inside Mount Hayes happened in 1979. I was wrong. It happened in 1973. And then in 1975, Pat Price, our remote viewer that said all this, he mysteriously passed away in a Las Vegas hotel room of a heart attack. Now, remember, Pat Price told us that inside Mount Hayes, which is located right about here, aliens were working with humans in Alaska. 
Now this is a map of alien sightings inside of Alaska and you can see that there's a hot spot on both sides of the mountain. From 1969 to 2023, there have been over 600 reports in Alaska alone of UFOs or alien sightings. That makes Alaska ranked number three for alien sightings in the United States when you take in population and size in general. So let's put all this together. Over 20,000 missing people in this triangle right here. We've got alien sightings right here. We've got Mount Hayes in the middle of all of this where in 1973, Pat Price said, Aliens live in that mountain and they are working with humans on secret projects. Aliens live in Alaska and you'll never change my mind. When this guy was arrested and executed, he said thank you and smiled. This guy right here is Hamza Banadeli and what he did in 2016 is absolutely insane. And it's up to you to decide whether he's a hero or a villain. So basically what this guy did was took fraud to a whole new level. I'm talking mass, mass fraud. Now you may think taking a few hundred thousand pounds is big, taking a million quid, you know, that's pretty damn big fraud. Not compared to this, it's not. Now Hamza was very qualified with technology. He knew his way around the computer like the back of his flipping hand, and he was a very qualified hacker. I think you can see where this is going. In 2016, his hacking took a new approach when he did this. So what he did was hacked into major banks, hedge funds, and governments worldwide, like all the biggest ones, and extracted, wait for it, over four billion, that, with a B. 4.2 billion dollars to be precise. Nuts. However, this is where it gets interesting. It wasn't like he was just some crazy criminal wanting to steal 4 billion pounds to just use himself. No. He donated every single bit to charities all across the world. Children charities, animal charities, homeless charities, water aid, the list goes on. However, of course, he did get caught and did get arrested eventually, but the money was already spent. He'd got the money and given it to all these different charities, so there was no way they could get it all back. He'd done what he wanted to do and sacrificed himself for it. So when he was eventually arrested, he actually said thank you to the police officers and smiled at them. Now there's lots of rumours out there that he did get executed and was saying thank you there as well, but I think these are just, you know, a hoax. I don't think he's dead, I think he's still in prison. But apparently he got a lot of praise from the judges as well in court who were saying, mm, you know what, fair enough. But even again in court, he smiled at the judge, wasn't sad he'd been given this huge sentence, and actually just said thank you. Well, wow, kind of a modern day Robin Hood, if you will. That's a lot of money. I just hope that the companies that he did end up donating all the money to really did utilize it and they're not shady in their own way because I really think a lot of donation companies are kind of like pocketing a lot of the cash. But nonetheless, really awesome that he did that. Kind of still the wrong thing to do. You should never steal from anybody, but at least he did end up putting it into other people's pockets that kind of need it, you know? Not saying that it's a good thing to do. You should never steal. But in this case, at least there was some money fluctuation going back into the system of people in need. But still, don't steal. Look what was sent to me from China, y'all. Look what they're seeing in China. What the heck? Why is there two rings? Hmm? Why is there two rings? Usually there's one, right? You, why is there two rings now, huh? Look at this. It looks like a poker ball, y'all. I've been telling y'all. Look at that, y'all. That is crazy, man. So people in China are seeing this too? This right here was sent to me from Barbados. Look at that, man. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look, you can see the other ring. Wow, y'all see that? He said it was literally playing pickaboo with him, y'all. Look at this. Look, look at that. It is literally playing pickaboo. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Just look at the pictures, bro. It's getting closer. And now look, y'all see that? Y'all see the other, the other, other sun? But y'all see that? So you have this blue sun and potentially another sun and then this big dark entity in the back, y'all. Oh my goodness. What is going on with the world? Could this possibly be what they call Nibiru, Planet X? Look at that. The X, the huge X. Do you guys see that? That's literally the Vitruvian man, in a sense. Yeah. Wow. What an amazing time to be alive, y'all. Again, y'all, there's beautiful changes afoot. Look, that looks just like that, right? What I just told you, I look just like that. You can't make this shift up, bro. This shift is shifting. Let me know what you guys think about this video. This video is strictly for entertainment purposes only. I am only raising awareness to interesting situations during this interesting time. Like, comment, and share for more videos like this. Thank you for tuning to my frequency. Let's get this shift, y'all. Peace in. 
Do you hear what Walmart's doing? Dude, no, don't I, get me started. He knows. He You're about to convince, convert me into a non-Walmart person. And I've been Walmart ride or die for the, my whole life. Listen to this. So Walmart really put in the muscle to make all these self-checkouts. And so firing a ton of staff and stuff. Saving so much money. They lost record amounts of money. In theft. Last quarter was like $300 million yeah. or something. But now they're coming out with, it's called Walmart Plus. So basically, you pay $98 a year in order to be able to use the self-checkout. <laughs> they Listen. think they're Amazon. <laughs> what? What are they doing? That's not going to work. Going on? We're, we're paying you to work for you? Yeah. That, is that makes no sense. Dumbest <laughs> thing I've ever heard in my life. So like, here, here's an idea. Because they can't just like get rid of it. The investment the, they've put in it. The yeah. investment, but also like getting that, more staffing. And, and like, that's where the yeah. future's going. Like they're not going backwards. Like they, they just got to figure out a system that works. And it's going to get to that point where Amazon, they have the cameras where yeah. it registers everything you pick up. Yeah. I know. It's going to get to that ready. point. Yeah. I think personally, it's going to get to a point where whenever you put something into a cart, it's going to automatically register that device. So when you walk out of the building, it will pay for everything automatically. That's kind of what I think it's going to lead to. But that's still probably a few years away. I think paying $98 a year just to self-checkout is kind of ridiculous. I do think it comes with other benefits, though. It's like you get certain discounts, you get discounts on gas, things like that, free shipping as well. But still, it's it's going to be going downhill pretty fast. It's only a matter of time before they knock out all the employees and they just have drones and robots come and deliver us food from Walmart. Let me know what you guys think on this one. Oh. I can't even get it out. Oh my god, babe. Holy crap. Yeah. Could you imagine taking a bite out of your chicken sandwich and it's just all this pla- I, don't, I would never be able to eat another chicken sandwich from anywhere ever again. I already don't like to eat out at fast food places. This right here would just be the, the cherry on top. It would just never happen again for me because that's disgusting. <laughs> Have any of you ever experienced something like this? I've had the occasional hair in my food. But I've never had whole on plastic bag in my food like that. You could basically rewrap that chicken sandwich with how much plastic there was. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. And as always, if you found any of these clips interesting, links are in the description down below. And with that being said, have a good day.